Anyway, so, um... You know, I don't have much to do this week on the show. I've been thinking about the uh, intervals, though. Uh, because I, I, I really enjoy this guitar. Right now, this guitar is fine for me to play. It's a, it's a very long fingerboard. So basically, this is the 12th fret. And on a classical guitar, the 12th fret's where the body and neck meet. So I've got all this extra room up here of mandolin range. This is, this is mandolin territory up here, see, guitar. So uh, what I, I really enjoy, though, is, is just uh, is, is thinking about the, the different intervals and kind of what they mean. And people wonder, you know, what that is, but uh, why that's important. But if you think about it, like, OK, I do this lecture for children sometimes in elementary schools where I, I demonstrate a, uh, a major chord and a minor chord. See, the major chord is kind of happy, and the minor chord is kind of sad. And that's, you know, people can latch on to that sort of that idea. But then, of course, you can have more complicated thoughts. Uh, one slightly more complicated thought is that if you, if you make a seven chord, a dominant seven chord, like say a C7, which, of course, is a C chord with a B flat in it. So you just you put this extra note in there, make it into. If you do that, you want to change to the next chord. See, so like. See, that's a, that's, a, that's a more complicated thought. I've spoken often of, of my, my love of the ad nine because I'm not, not sure what it means, you know, to anybody. To me, um, the two things about it is you have the two dissonances in the chord, but if you put it all together, it works out fine. Right, pretty chord. The other thing I think of is that an ad nine means you've gone one too far. You've gone a little too far because, you know, an octave is eight notes. So you go nine notes instead of eight notes, you see, because the octave is, right? That's an octave. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But I went one too far, see? So I say, well, I've gone a little too far, see? And that's a good interval. But one I've been thinking about lately, because I've been, I've been, actually, I've been playing, uh, what is that? Uh, uh, Since I Fell For You. Uh, but it has these E flats in it. See, the version I have, which is in my uh, wonderful real book, or was it standard fake book? I don't know. But it, it's in the key of C, you know, which has no sharps or flats. But it, it has E flats in it. You see, it has an accidental, has E flat. So what, what's, what's this E flat doing in C, man? C's are like this. How about putting this, that? You know what that is? A C, in the key of C, an E flat is a sharp nine. Yeah. Because what it actually is, is in this case is, um, yeah, a sharp nine. Because C, D, E, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, sharp, like an E flat. So what I'm getting is this blue tone. So if you think about it, sharp nine, that's a, that's a really blue note. That's an add nine, only you went too far. You see, you went to the, um, um, you went w even a half step beyond one step too far. You've gone a step and a half too far, man. So that's what Jimi Hendrix liked him like this. This is an E sharp nine. Here's another one. Here's another one. See? 